Local laws override federal laws, right? Can Mike Huckabee even qualify as an analyst on Fox News anymore? What does a guy have to do to get a little terminal cancer around here? For November 13th, 2015, from the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in, that's a little more like it, Cranston, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. <laughs> For November 13th, 2015, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Oregon recently took a baby step towards sensible gun regulation by requiring background checks in advance of gun purchases. Hooray for sensibleness. A county in Oregon has decided, nah, maybe that's not really how we want to do things here. The name of the county? Coos County. C-O-O-S. Why does it always seem like these places are always named something that fits right in with the redneck stereotype? Like Coos County, Gobbler's Knob, Waco. Is there, like, some secret Dukes of Hazard country living as a parasitic twin within the borders of the U.S.? Yes. Yes, there is. The residents of Coos County were so upset about the state background check requirement that they passed a ballot measure requiring sheriff's deputies not to enforce the unconstitutional gun laws without clarifying what is constitutional, and it's not like the people of Coos County, Oregon, are qualified or empowered to decide what is constitutional or not, and the sheriff's deputies of Coos County are certainly not so qualified or empowered, really... The thought of one of these dudes determining in the moment what my constitutional rights are and what laws he's going to uphold uh, leaves me fairly convinced I can live the rest of my life without visiting Coos County, Oregon. Just add that to the list of places never to go. Change.org is currently hosting a petition posted by Patricia Grimes and Associates, which only shares activity information with people the member knows. The petition is directed at the tireless, though not always successful, defender of particular and peculiar religious rights, Jay Seculo. The headline of the petition reads... Disband the Freedom From Religion Foundation and officially classify it as a hate group. The petition charges, The Freedom From Religion Foundation is an anti-Christian group that tramples on the rights of thousands of Christians all across America of free speech and public expression. Well, the petitioner certainly doesn't understand what the Constitution has to say about religion, or what the FFRF does, or why, as evidenced by this delightful counterfactual here. The FFRF wrongly claims that it is unconstitutional to have anything pertaining to God and or the Bible displayed on government, city, or state property. They wrongly claim that such things violate the separation of church and state. Nope. The FFRF actually works to make sure that the rights of people who don't adhere to a religion are not trampled by those who do, and to ensure that the government holds to its constitutional obligation to show no preference or favor to any religion. The petitioner then goes on to fail to grasp the spirit of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, or the meaning of the settled case law in this matter, as evidenced by this chunky-style verbal diarrhea. Separation of church and state is found nowhere in the U.S. Constitution. It is not in the Bill of Rights. It is not even a law. The phrase separation of church and state comes from a letter written by Thomas Jefferson to assure a Baptist organization that the First Amendment protected their rights. His letter was not and is not the law. 
It was not and is not the law, but it informs a reasonable understanding of what the Madison's intent was in his phrasing of the Establishment Clause. This has been further reinforced by case law, for example, 1947's Emerson v. Board of Education. And just to ensure that no rational person will take this proposed action seriously, the petition page references a legitimate site displaying the ugly truth about this group. Link is in the description. Which descends into quote mining, guilt by association, conflation, and a bunch of other clumsily ham-fisted character assassination techniques to paint the FFRF as the monstrous baby-eating cult that it isn't. And in squirrel news, a Canadian gray squirrel took a dive off the 21st floor of an apartment building and appeared to land and scurry away with no apparent injury. The jump was caught on video by someone who clearly doesn't understand how to operate a video camera, so the exact fate of the squirrel is virtually impossible to make out from direct observation of the video, but my best guess is that the squirrel latched onto branches in the arboreal canopy below, which would provide a much more gentle deceleration than, you know, concrete. Plus, squirrels are fortunate to have a non-fatal terminal velocity at sea level. So, eh. I mean, you know, cool to watch, but, eh. I like money. Up next, Michelle Bachman plays her China Grove, inside Ben Carson's It's a Beautiful Mind, and still Josh Fierstein can't figure out technology. Your childhood. George Lucas. In 1977, George Lucas made your childhood. In 1997, George Lucas took your childhood away. In 1999, George Lucas made you watch as he bent your childhood over a stump. Now, George Lucas wants you to watch him violating your childhood in 3D. Finally, someone is here to stop George Lucas from defiling your childhood memories anymore. But we need your help. The Original Trilogy Restoration Alliance has been established to raise all the money necessary to distract George Lucas from thinking Star Wars needs to be revised again. Please, give generously. This is our most desperate hour. Help us save your memories. You're our only hope. (sighs) Black Friday. All right, buckle up. We've got a lot to cover. Michelle Bachman reports that Jesus is coming soon. Again. Again. Fox Business hosted another GOP debate with the bar raised a little this time for being at the grown-up table. Mike Huckabee and Chris Christie failed to make the cut and had to sit with the kids. H.R. 2802, the deceptively named First Amendment Defense Act, aims to prohibit the federal government from discriminating against an individual due to their religious or moral belief that two people of the same sex should not be permitted to marry or that same-sex marriage should not be recognized. A discriminatory action would include changes in tax treatment, or reduction of federal grants or benefits. ACLU Legislative Representative Ian Thompson said the bill clearly encompasses discrimination against single mothers and would interfere with the EEOC's ability to serve its mandate. Nice. Joshua Vrudestein 
The loudmouth, fat-ass Christian YouTube sensation, overestimator of his own importance, and self-proclaimed social media personality lost his last marble over Starbucks' simple red cup design for this year's winter season because it doesn't explicitly say, Jesus is the reason for the season! Or some shit. And he got on CNN only to have his Skype connection suck. <laughs> Donald Trump is so steamed about the whole Starbucks cup thing that he's proposing a boycott and has said, we'll all be saying Merry Christmas this year. I won't, Don. In fact, specifically because you said that, I will make a point this year of not saying Merry Christmas to anyone. Bill Palmer of the website DailyNewsBin.com speculates that Ben Carson may be suffering from a mental disorder similar to that which made mathematician John Nash's life so difficult. The difference being that Nash had people around him who cared for him and protected him from his own destructive behavior, while Ben Carson appears to have surrounded himself with leeches, ticks, and hyenas. Still, if Palmer is even close to right, maybe Carson shouldn't be president. Maybe. Speaking of Ben Carson, one of his latest way out proclamations, and I mean, <laughs> who can keep up? is that the great pyramids of Egypt were not built to be tombs for the pharaohs. They were built to be grain elevators. What? And speaking of Donald Trump and Ben Carson, given the GOP's affinity for outsiders, it seems a little hypocritical that they're so down on immigrants. Don't you think? As we do from time to time, let's spend a little time with our resident cranky old man, Kurt Mudgeon, in Curmudgeon's Corner. Rich people today are kind of jerks. When I was a kid, sure, rich people were imperious and greedy, but a lot of the time they got a little bit of conscience later in life and donated the bulk of their wealth to some worthy cause, like starting a university or funding the arts. Sure, there were jerks back then, too. J.D. Rockefeller was a greedy old man, for whom too much was never enough. But then you had Howard Hughes, J. Paul Getty, Andrew Carnegie, who gave great gobs of money to charity, education, research, and cultural enrichment. Today we have people like Mitt Romney and Rupert Murdoch, who just seem to accumulate wealth and seek only to make the world safe for them to get even richer. Let me put it to you this way. If you have a yacht that could stare down most of the capital ships of most of the world's navies, you're a rich jerk. Okay. The ironically named pharma concern Qualitest is in hot water because it apparently mispackaged about 7 million blister packs of birth control pills, which have allegedly resulted in a number of unwanted or unplanned pregnancies. Now a class action suit has been filed asking for damages up to and including the costs of delivering, raising, and educating the children resulting from these unintended pregnancies. <laughs> is this sensible? Here are pig and sheep with their thoughts. Absolutely not. Contraception is the devil's work. I bet one of God's little pharmaceutical angels came down from heaven and flipped that stuff all around just to confound the devil's plan. Of course, being all powerful, God should be able to just destroy the devil or or make him a nice guy. So, uh But yeah, contraception is bad. Sure, such a settlement would set an astonishing precedent, but the whole point of taking a contraceptive in the first place is to avoid getting pregnant. And in most cases, I would guess that at least one motivating factor for wanting to avoid getting pregnant would be the cost of having a child. If the manufacturer of your contraceptive has negligently prepared your contraceptive such that it is guaranteed to be ineffective if used as directed, then I'd say, yeah, stick it to them. I mean... Either they have insurance, in which case they're covered, so who cares, 
or they don't. And, well, that's the cost of doing slot B business. Well, that's what Pig and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. I can't believe you like money, too. We should hang out. Still to come, why you shouldn't put Ben and Jerry's in your fish tank. And I'll see your counter petition and raise you a sponsored hashtag. Have you been injured in an accident or can you pretend to have been? If so, we may be entitled to 40% of any settlement you receive. We're the law offices of Angry, Bitter, Vindictive, and Rosenblatt, and we've spent over half a century profiting from the pain and suffering of people who, in some cases, didn't even know they were suffering or in pain. At Angry, Bitter, Vindictive, and Rosenblatt, our attorneys have the skills and experience necessary to turn almost any activity into billable hours. And that means you can pay us more. Angry, Bitter, Vindictive, and Rosenblatt, specializing in personal injury, family law, product liability claims, and almost any other area where emotion weighs more than evidence. Angry, Bitter, Vindictive, and Rosenblatt, getting richer off your mild discomfort since 1955. And now, here's Moose Weintraub with the Sports Half Minute. Moose Weintraub, Sports Half Minute. It's a whole half minute of sports. 30 seconds of sports. Moose Weintraub, Sports Half Minute. This is your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. Chicago Bulls star Jimmy Butler wanted a boombox fish tank. So he got one. What, this is sports news? Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. Phil Collins has announced that he is coming out of retirement. Whatever you think of that fact, that's just set up. Someone has put up a petition on change.org to persuade the United Nations that it must stop Phil Collins from coming out of retirement. Obviously a joke. Some apparently enthusiastic Phil Collins fans have launched a counter petition to stop the petition to stop Phil Collins. Phil Collins has made so much money uh, sure, he's had costly divorces, but Wikipedia estimates his net worth at over a hundred million pounds. Does he really need to come out of retirement? And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Apparently, all you need to do to get an advanced private screening of the latest Star Wars flick is to be just about dead from cancer. Sweet. Daniel Fleetwood, 32, and lifelong Star Wars fan, with the aid of his wife and Star Wars actors Mark Hamill, Peter Mayhew, John Boyega, and uh, as well as an army of Twitter... What do you call them? Twitterers? Twi Twitter users? Petitioned Disney to give him an advanced screening since it didn't look like he was going to make it to the release date. He had the screening at his home last week and died this week. Of course, he saw an unfinished cut of the movie, so we'll all have a better experience, no doubt. Both because the movie is finished and because most of us are not suffering from advanced spindle cell sarcoma. All things being equal, I'll wait for the movie. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, you can submit your story tips online at newsundies.com or on Twitter with the hashtag NUSTIP. News Undies is a weekly show. We'll be back on Friday, November 20th with fresh undies. If you like this video, please like this video. If you like the show, please spread the word. Got a question, comment, or suggestion? Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, circle us on Google+, follow us on Twitter, ignore us on MySpace, tell your friends, and buy News Undies Kitsch at newsundies.com. Thanks for watching. For all of us here at News Undies, until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be headed to Easter Island to hunt for giant stone pez.
And thanks to story tippers Jeff, the God of Biscuits, and Anonymous! I just want to tell you good luck. We're all counting.